feel a strong shiver shoot through my body from the coldness of the winter sun waking me up. Although the night was a blur on my mind, I am immediately reminded of our order de fe as I feel the warm red glow of the ambers lying beside me. My head aches and my body feels feeble. I guess we really let our frustrations out on drinking. How could she just leave us? What made her think after all the things I did for her, suddenly leaving for the city would be acceptable? I'm trying to understand the little seamstress's mentality, but I can't. Her d impulsive decision was as bewildering to me as our clock is to the village peasants. I vaguely remember from the night before that Lua told me that before she left, she had told them one thing. It was something from Balzac. That a woman's beauty is a treasure beyond price. I wonder what it could possibly mean. Maybe I could ask Lua. I turn to see Lua sitting on the ridge edge, looking down into what seems to be the abyss. I decide to sit beside him. Hey, Laura. Hey. How are you feeling? A little fatigued and dizzy, but all right, I guess. Last night was pretty crazy, huh? You could say. My mind is drifting in and out of thought, struggling to process what had happened so suddenly. I try to maintain talk with John Lin, but I'm speechless. Laura? What did the little Chinese seamstress mean to you about what she said before she left? I really don't know. Perhaps she didn't like us like we thought she did. It all feels like a nightmare. A nightmare that shines what feels like truth to the one Jian Lin told me about him having. We took our eyes off her for one moment and now she was gone. How dare she! After all the length I had gone to bring pleasure to her life. I cultured her to become a civilized woman. I gave her an appreciation of stories, teaching her the ways of the Western world through books. And yet she ran away from me. She seemed so happy with me. She loved me as much as I love her. But she betrayed me. Where had it all gone wrong? Had I not satisfied her enough? I cast a brief look at Lua to see his eyes gazing wide, lost, and distraught with pain. I decided to leave him alone and walk to the remnants of what happened last night. As I stare down into the ashes, I begin to feel some sense of regret. Maybe we had made an irrational mistake for so long. These books have deepened our curiosity and developed a richer understanding of Western culture. But now, the spark that once fueled our hunger for re-education has been extinguished. Maybe, maybe there was something we missed in those books. I gave her my heart only for it to be manipulated and taken away from me. I gave her a future with her, yet she destroyed it. All this time I've spent conditioning her to become a worthy girl has led me to this overwhelming grief. Had she not twisted the message I had intended to give her from Balzac, she might never have left. I guess I admit I do miss the pleasure of immersing myself into these utopian worlds, distracting me from this dispiriting place. But I'm glad that we burned Balzac to nothing but ash, along with those other vile novels. They have given me nothing but dejection. I glance over at John Lin to see an air of melancholy surrounding him. I can sense his regret over our auto de fe. But I just can't understand how he would value the joy that these novels have given us over the tragic conclusion they have led us to. 
Maybe he's just jealous that he wasn't able to experience the love that I felt. But maybe he was lucky not to suffer such an unbearable loss. As I walked back along the narrow, rocky path, we so furiously chased the little seamstress across, I began to think to myself. The more I ponder about her impulsive decision and the clues we missed, such as her appearance and accent, the more it seems as though she intentionally planned to leave the village all along. But why? What had driven her away from her home, her family, from me and Luo? It must have been something about the way she felt we treated her. Had we given her too much knowledge and power? So much so, she realised her our intentions of civilising her? She would have developed her own independence and courage to take charge of her own life. I feel like there's a knife inside my heart, ripping my soul apart. I feel like my love is bleeding out and all hope is lost. The one thing that kept me satisfied in life has left me more devastated than ever. I can't withstand this depression. Without thinking, I blurt out the question both of us had been asking. Why did she leave? I've been asking myself the same question. But I've realised something, Lua. Something that puts us to blame. From the moment we began trying to re-educate the little seamstress, her decision to leave was an inevitable choice. I gave her my time, my loyalty, and my heart. Why would she betray that? Luo, you need to understand that we made the mistake of trying to culture her. I don't think I made any mistake, Jianlin. It's not our fault she left. I tried to save her from enduring an unpleasant village life. I gave her a bright future. I wanted her to become a suitable partner. But whilst you were trying to make the little seamstress cultured enough for your affections, you unintentionally encouraged some semblance of individual liberty and expression. Unlike us, she knew no better than the life she had until we interfered. I don't understand, Jianlin. It was those books we burned, Luo, whilst we were trying to culture her through storytelling. It was these same books that taught her to appreciate her own worth. That's what the little seamstress meant. That a woman's treasure is beyond price. I wanted her to be civilized. But it was this very thing that we achieved that caused her to leave. She didn't want to waste her treasure on us. As much as it breaks my heart to admit, we became too attracted to her beauty. At the end of the day, we cannot blame the little seamstress, as it was us who was responsible for the choices that led to her decision. As we approach the village entrance, we realise that whilst we may be back to where we started, Balzac had unexpectedly taught us an invaluable coming-of-age lesson.